He said one, so I'm assuming we are live. <laughs> he never says go. I think should, that's as far as it can count. I just, he just gets to one and it's over. There's no words after that. So anyways, guys, I'm assuming we are on. Welcome to Wednesdays with Springfield Leather. We are still as unprofessional as ever. Coming to you <laughs> with another Tony, I s really... They would write us a script, but we can't read. That's true. <laughs> Are we, we're live. We're live. Sorry. He's messing with my head over here with our video prompter thingy where we put your questions. So it's great. It's a great Wednesday. It's going to be awesome. We are back with Spencer today, and we are going to do part two of how many ever parts of this braiding series that we have now started. So today we've got a flat braid. Mm -hmm. And we're making a hat band, guys. So I'm super excited about this. He made this sample, um, and this is just out of some deer skin that he had cut up. Um, it's got, now what are these round parts here at the end? Turk's knots. So, okay, so we've got Turk's yeah. knots here. Mm -hmm. And then what is this round part as we come it's here? Just the herringbone we did last week. That we did. So we're incorporating last week. Look at us grow. We're moving. It's mm -hmm. great. So we're going to do some flat braiding along with a little bit of what we did last week, and then we'll do some Turk's head knots at the end. He has brought some very primitive tools here that you will show us how to use. Some of them look like they're from a prison yard. They look pretty yard. fine to me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right. <laughs> You're up. He's yeah. up. It's going to be great. So. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So he has already... Mm -hmm. um gotten through quite a bit of this so he took um some quarter inch kangaroo lace mm -hmm. and he cut it down to a fine three sixteenths of an inch yep. um to do this flat and we've got what eight strands here that eight we're working strands. with yep awesome okay mm -hmm. so we, sorry do we want to start in with how to start one and preparing your lace and then we'll get yeah and then we'll get in going how to, size it. how to size it and stuff like that Start at the top. Is that going to be okay? Yeah. Why do you have a mace on the table? It's it's a it's jig. like a miniature it's a mace. <laughs> We've got some fun tools today yes. for you guys. Nothing that we sell, but you can build at home. Mm -hmm. I guarantee it. <laughs> Why don't we do that? We'll start with like cutting it, and then we'll get into to the braiding part of it. Is that all right? Okay. So you could, I mean, potentially you could just use like eighth inch. You could, like yes. if you didn't, if you didn't want to mess with having to cut down your own lace, um, you could just start with eighth inch. But we did fancy three sixteenths. Or you could use the quarter inch. Also, you could. It would be a real, it would be a real wide braid. But you could definitely do that. Yep. Well, we were last week when we got done, we were looking at the eighth inch, and we were we were seeing the inconsistencies of the mm -hmm. width of it. And then you pull it through and it still, even it was eighth and I think you had your jig set up for eighth and it was still. Took off a little bit took here Took off there. a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Perfection is hard to achieve. Yes, very much so. We'll just do a small piece. Here comes fun yep. item number one. Maybe it's how to stay, <laughs> stay down. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we did have a question last week. Where did your, where did you get your vice that you have? Uh, I got it from Harbor Freight. Does it have a special name or anything? Um, just a vice that's with a suction cup. Yep. I don't know exactly what they called it. Yeah. Yep. It's the only one they have there. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't we talk about your tool real fast? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here Very we go. Very interesting. So basically, it's a piece of PVC with about a 45. This is probably a little steeper cut in it. And then a bolt or something running through it so you can tighten it and pinch your blade in between the two halves. And this is three quarter inch PVC, uh, schedule 40. So it's thicker walled. And then I got a piece of three quarter inch scheduled 20 PVC as a guide that I split down one side and I popped it over it. So that's my guide and it slides. So, yeah, so we've got. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Mm hmm. So real technical thing going on here. Yep. That we've got. Mm hmm. 
Okay. It is pretty technical. When it, yeah, no, it, it, it really is. <laughs> I don't know if I put that back in right. Okay. And, and this just, that's the angle of your bevel that yep. you're going to be doing? Mm -hmm. Does it also set the width of your lace that you're going to be? Yeah, I mean, I have a, a 90 degree cut in here also, but it depends how I'm feeling if I want to cut it 90 and then bevel it. Most of the time I just bevel it and size it. Okay, and this part here, does it just slide yeah. back and forth yeah. to, it, to it, adjust it, your width? Just slides. Oh, I see, yeah. I see. So. So we've got it set up to bevel. Yep. Okay. At the 45, roughly, <clears throat> with the hand saw. So it's, it's not exact. <laughs> so, it's good enough. Yeah. It looks like it gets the job done. Yeah, we're just going to take a small sliver off here. So just going to size it up roughly, and then we're going to slide our lace in like this. You will have a little extra right here. And then we're just going to cut it all. Pull it through, and it just takes off just a little bit. Look at that. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And this is the back of the lace. And this is the back. You don't okay. want to do the front. Right. So we are beveling the back of the mm -hmm. lace. You know, you can bevel the front. Uh, saddle maker I used to work for, he would uh, like latigo because it's the color on on burgundy latigo oh. is not struck through right mm -hmm. and he would wrap saddle horns with with latigo and he would bevel the the rough side of it and and wrap it rough side mm -hmm. out and it made kind of a tiger stripe look to it interesting pretty yeah. cool yeah yep so yeah and then the other side it's normally you want to shrink it down a little bit because it doesn't because you've taken a little bit off a little bit off and sometimes the beveled side will slip underneath Okay. your collar and so mm -hmm. so we're just gonna clip that yep. oh. Oh. Yep. I can't do it for you hold it yeah there we go yep so we're just, I shrank it down a little bit so move this collar closer to the blade <clears throat> just like six sixteenth if that then we're just gonna once again, you want that blade to be nice and sharp. Oh, yes. Especially if you're doing deer hide because it'll scrunch up. Yeah. And then you want to curl. Yep. Yeah, and yeah, you get choppy edges. And so, yeah. So this is a beveled strand now. Okay. Yeah. So last week when we did our our round braid, mm -hmm. you would have probably gone through um, just because it lays a lot nicer yeah. to bevel yeah. all of those edges. Um, and I believe that we had some samples. I don't know if we still have those, but like the, the braid that we did last week, after you got done with all of your, like running it through mm -hmm. all of your paces, it looked pretty smooth, but it still wasn't quite as smooth as that beveled yep. um, braid that you had mm -hmm. done. So this just allows it to lay a little bit nicer. It's by no means like you don't have to do it, yeah. but it just adds a little bit of that finished touch mm -hmm. to it. It makes the edge sort of disappear mm -hmm. in your braid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you don't have that raw edge you're looking at. Yep. Okay. So all of these strands that you have here, have they all been beveled? Yep. They've all Woo! been beveled. That's a lot and, of beveling. Yeah. And they're slightly smaller than this quarter inch. Right. So. Okay. Yep. And I roughly got that from, I put all eight strands next to each other because that's roughly the width of your flat braid is going to be. And then put the concho on it. And that gave me gotcha. how wide I want them strands to be. Okay. So, okay. yeah. If you just like. Oh, over here. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so you like take all your strands, all eight of them, and put them together kind of like that. That's roughly how wide your flat braid's going to be. Maybe, Maybe slightly little, wider. Okay. Yeah. And then that's how I got the width of the strands to where I need them. Okay. Because what did I grab you? Like a, a half inch wide concho or something like that? I'm not sure. Something. Mm -hmm. So we got some of these south, these little southwest um, conchos with uh, turquoise uh, stone set in, in them. Um, I know last week when we were doing one, somebody was like, hey, can you put a concho on a flat braid for a hat band? And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, we can. Mm -hmm. We're going to show you how yep. to do that today. <laughs> so anyways, you got these cute little, you don't want anything huge on your hat band. I mean, I suppose you could. You could. But we grabbed these nice ones because they're, 
they seemed a little bit more happy and appropriate. The age of Dale Earnhardt is over. <laughs> Did he have really big conchos? Oh, he had really big hat bands. Okay. Big feathered hat bands with all sorts of oh, stuff. Oh, like all. pirate hat bands? Yeah, mm -hmm. stuck up in front. Yeah. Nice. The Intimidator. Yeah. Uh, when you measure for a hat band, how do you know how much lace you need? Uh, double it. So what I always do, I just double it. So I measure around, and there is overlap. Yes. So on so, this guy, we've got, especially with this one that we're doing, we've got the, yep. the knots that come over on both sides. Yep. That's worse to see, because now it's all black. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. It's the only color I had. No, it's fine. Yeah. So you've got, so, I mean, you, you, would, you would double it. You start with the one edge, and then just whenever you get around. The, yeah, you transition back into yeah, the round. you break. transition back. So you just kind of keep measuring as you go, make sure that it's you've got the, the correct length and then yeah. Yeah, and as back. far as the actual length of the total finished hat band, it's, it's, as long as you make it longer, you're good, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's adjustable. Right. Yep. It cinches up. I think yep. that's right. I don't know now. Uh -huh. It doesn't look like it's going anywhere. Um, Rhonda, real fast. She had a question. It's her first time. Welcome aboard, Rhonda. Um, she wanted to know what leather she could use with her um, Cricut machine. So, um, you uh, mostly thin leathers. You want to use something probably two to three ounce, three to four. I don't know about four to five. Um, that would probably be about the top end of leathers. Anything like the 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 chrome tan upholstery, um, any of our printed leathers, usually they're kind of in that, that thickness range and you can run them through that. I know a lot of um, people that use the, the, that machine to make earrings and stuff. So two to three, up to four to five is, is about your range of thickness. Is there a rule of thumb for how wide the band needs to be? I've seen a lot that have a gap at the top, but the ones I see are tooled veg. Hmm. I mean, Devin, you can... Make them as full, narrow or as wide as you want. Yeah. Personal opinion. Honestly, I don't know. I, you could kind of Google it, like just, you know, leather hat mm -hmm. bands and see what the internet tells you is like sizes that companies carry and make, but that would be probably the only rule of thumb that I'd be able to find. Otherwise, it's whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Probably a real tall hat needs a tall hat band or a thick hat band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this one, what is that, like a half inch tall? So the, the one that came on this, this uh, little... Um, straw hat thingy here. What is it? Palm, palm leaf. A palm leaf hat. Yeah. Um, it has like a half inch hat band. So pretty narrow. This one's a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. so whatever you feel like doing. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've beveled. So at this point, we're just going to do some flat braiding. Yep. So And then we're going to finish it. So we'll do, we'll show you how to do the flat braid. And then we're going to go into the braid that we did last week. And then we'll do a Turk's mm -hmm. head. Yep. Okay, that's where we're going. And then to figure out how how wide it was going to be, can we do that one more, more time? We had another question about it. What if I want a one inch? What if I want a one and a half inch hat band? Okay. Yeah. That would be. Either add strands or or make count. strands thick or yeah. want to stick to. Alright. So basically you yeah. Pinch all your strands together. And let's see what we've got here. So this one, you know, you're coming out to like an inch and a quarter-ish. Yeah. And then got braided, it. it's a little over three quarters. Yeah, so it was about a half inch. Yeah. So, yeah. So all your strands mushed together should be cool. About a half inch more. Okay. From that, what that is, it might differ on width. I don't know. You have to experiment on that. But, Yes. Okay, you're doing a flat braid here, yep. and, and last week you did the round braid. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. I might stick. <laughs> it did well last week. <clears throat> you need to lick the bottom of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, basically, it's a... I, I didn't show you diamond braid last week. It's a diamond braid, but in a flat form. So basically, uh, if you see this strand right here, lays over your the last strand here. So the two inside? Yep, the two okay. inside strands. The one that lays over, you're going to grab from the direction that one's pointing in. So since this one's laying over, 
we're going to go from up here. And you can see maybe that this strain goes over and this one comes under this strand. So basically we're going to do the opposite of what this strand has done to these strands. Does that make sense? So you're weaving. Yes, yeah, basically. That's, just okay. weaving. that's what I was going to say. Braiding is basically just weaving. Mm -hmm. Different ways. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to bring this strand over this strand, over this one. Then we're going to bring it under this one. And then we're going to bring it over this one. Okay. Right. Because you want to do the opposite of whatever's happening yes. with the last one. Okay. So just like that. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to go to the other side. Now we're going to go to the other side. So we're going to bring this. See how that one has a black one over or dark brown one over it? We're going to go under it to bring this strand up. And then over this one because it goes over that one. And under this one because it goes under that one. I don't know if I'm making it more complex. I think it's okay, but kind of, so, so basically we're coming out, did we do a eight strand braid last, we did a six, we didn't did we? We six. Okay, but same concept with an eight. So as you're coming, so we did this last week with this round, and so as you come out of the round and you start to do the flat, like how do you know that transition point into, into your flat section like of how, your braid? how do you transition into mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Uh, Basically, you go into a uh, diamond plait, which is instead of doing like we did last week. You're pulling it around. Well, you still do that, but instead of going uh, like last week we did, under two, over one. Okay. You would go you'd... over, or you'd go under one, over one, or you go under one, over one. No. You you would do it like this. <laughs> Like under one, over one, under one. We really aren't yeah. related, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. It's mostly just looking at the first one that you have on it and doing the opposite mm -hmm. each time you go through. Yeah. So if you start over, the next one's under, then over, then under, then over, yeah. then under. I mean, do you just like, at some point you're just like, okay, I'm just done with my round braid. And then, okay, I'm going to start doing the flat. So then you have all your strands yeah. and then you start doing the flat braid instead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then it just kind of works out. You've got this little kind of transition point a little bit down mm -hmm. here. And then you start just working the, the flat. Yeah. So, yeah. So pretty, you just stop round braiding and you start yeah. flat braiding. Okay. Basically. That's that's fine. That's mm -hmm. good. It's wonderful. <laughs> Way to make it confusing, Liz. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Um, yeah, so just kind of as you do that and going back and forth, we'll watch you. How would you, if you were just going to start a, fl a flat braid, um, would you just pinch it in the vise and then you would do something else with the ends? Like you would like wrap the ends or sew them. Um, but how would you do a flat braid all on its own without round braiding at the end? Uh, just the exact same. You would pinch the ends you wanted okay, in the right. vise in this orientation. So, and like a flat braid or a round braid, you would come out here, and a flat braid, you want to come out like this. Okay. So it lays all the strands flat. Sure. And so for this particular pattern that you've got going on here, you just had four dark brown and four light brown stacked yep. next to each other. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you can rearrange those for many different color patterns. Sure. But you do want to have it once you clamp it. That is your color pattern that you're going to get as you braid. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I'm sure those are many things that you could look up online about how to have different color patterns trickling through your work. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like this one quite a bit. I like how they mm -hmm. go back. Zigzag, yeah. yeah. It reminds me of like snakeskin. Yeah. That's what I thought of last night when I was making it. <laughs> that looks an awful lot like snakeskin. And then finishing the ends on a flat braid, since we're going to go back into a round braid today, mm -hmm. um, how do you finish the ends on a flat braid? Um, I mean, I would just either put some glue on it to hold it together or wrap it. Would you just clamp it, like maybe make like a little leather? Um, yeah, you could do that. And then just sew it down? Yeah, you could also use the sewing machine. Just yeah. Right across. It. Okay. Yeah, just something to hold it. Sure. 
I'm thinking you could use just like a little leather clamp situation or we actually on the bead side um, of our showroom, we've got some metal clamps that if you glued it together, you could take those metal clamps that have in. So like if you were making a bracelet yeah. with the flat braid, you could clamp those little metal they're just little claws that, yeah. that kind of dig in and glue that down. Sort of like a ferrule, only it's just an end clamp. There. Exactly, exactly, and finish that off. Okay, so for whatever you're making, there's probably a million different end options to, mm -hmm. to choose from. Now let's hear, as we go, do we want to put one of these conchos in? Uh, no, actually, I uh, did some experiment, and you just uh, get an awl, kind of widen up one of the gaps. Okay. And then just stick it in there. Just stick it in there, yep. okay. It's that simple. So we can do that when we're done. Mm -hmm. Just plop a concho right in the middle. Yep. Or wherever. Or wherever. Yep. It could be on the front. And then it would be like a quarter of the way. Depending where the De front is. Depending yep. on where the front is. You can do what you want. Yep. <laughs> Let me see if I can turn this camera to manual focus because it keeps going in and out and it's driving me nuts. <laughs> All right. You hold that spot just for a second. Yep. I don't know if I can do it upside down. All right, I'm going to have to jump on the table. <laughs> Hang tight, guys. You can keep going. I'll mess with it while you go. See how still I can hold the camera while I adjust it. All right, maybe it'll quit. Good. You don't want to pull super tight either. Just enough to keep it in place. So you want to bunch up all your Yeah, you don't want them to bunch strands. up. Yeah. And this is one of the so slowest. <laughs> So many ins and outs. And so I really like when you're looking at it, you can tell what a difference it makes to have that lace beveled. Um, mm -hmm. Those strands are laying flush on top of one another. They don't have like a gap where they would kind of pucker up to where if the strand, you know, was full thickness at the edge, you would you would see that edge as you go. But this you don't see any edges. Mm -hmm. um, you don't see any of that thickness on the lace. So that that lays really nicely. Mm -hmm. Aren't you guys glad that we're not going to make you watch him braid the whole thing this week? Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to see how long you can be quiet, Liz. You've been really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you can talk about this stuff and draw all the pictures you want, but what you're doing right now, I think, is more explanatory than than anything else you could do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I really hate it when I'm watching a video and it like they cut out all this part and I'm just like, wait a minute, yeah. I'm I'm trying to actually get going with this and I would like to watch it for a few times and do it and not have to like continually back up my video mm -hmm. to make sure that you know I can find the spot where they're showing you this for ten seconds. Yeah look how flat that is. That's a good view from that angle. And then let's kind of curl up on the edge. Would that be something that you kind of hammer back out flat? Yeah. Yep. That should flatten out when we, if you want to call it rolling, not necessarily rolling. When he runs his flat board over it. Yeah. That... <laughs> well, kind of. No. Kind of run it over the flat board, but it's like. Mm. Uh -huh. Would that be one where you yeah. could just like use the side of a table yeah. if you wanted and just yeah. kind of yeah. work yeah. it out? Yeah. yeah, and if you had yeah. a really smooth, like a rolled countertop edge. Ooh. That would really make a nice, mm -hmm. nice rolling. We should have Rusty get us a nice granite countertop. So <laughs> Kevin and, and Lindsay and uh, Chris and Shanna are all in Tucson this week um, buying rocks for the store. And um, Chris has been sending me pictures of these beautiful labradorite tabletops. Wow. And he said, I got the wrong conference room table. <laughs> but I, I don't know if Kevin would be down with me buying a, a rock. I mean, he probably would really like it, but he wouldn't like the, the price 20, point. A $20,000 $20, table. $20,000 tabletop. <laughs> yeah. 
They're gorgeous though, man, those slabs. It's like the size of this table is like the slabs that he said, these four by eight tables that we have. Wow. Where do they, where do they get that labradorite at? I think it comes from Madagascar. I'm really wow. just guessing, but I'm, that's, I feel like labradorite comes that's from. That's a huge piece of rock to yeah. put on a ship. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, rocks are not cheap. Am I, I, I may not be 100% right about that. Don't quote me, guys. Look it up. Where, do, where does labradorite come from? Apparently, they found a labradorite lizard, and Kevin bought three of them. <laughs> so, one of those is going to be mine when it comes back. <laughs> Well, maybe he'll give you a choice of a lizard or a countertop. <laughs> <laughs> or a lizard or a tabletop. Exactly. <laughs> Molly, rocks are the best. You can never have too many rocks. She says she's going to get in trouble. We keep talking about rocks. Rocks are just so neat. We had, I think it was my first year that I worked here, they came back from Tucson, and they had this little labradorite carved bear. And it looked like he was standing in like a river. And the way that the fire was in, in the rock, when you like moved around the base, it looked like the water was flowing over oh, wow. like his legs um, and his arms. And then like his fur was like glistening. I just loved it so much. And we have this vendor, um, his last name is Bear. And he sells us a lot of leather, and he came in and he bought that rock. That's a great segue into what I was coming over here to say. <laughs> we have Papa Bear that just came in here. He's from Sweden, he said. Oh, hello. nice. Hello. So I know we got Germany and Sweden. What other wow. countries we have represented? Besides, I mean, I, obviously the United States. Yeah, you guys don't count anymore. You're not, <laughs> you're not exotic enough. <laughs> wow, Liz. She said it, just not kidding. anybody else. We appreciate you. <laughs> Okay. How's it going over there, Spencer? Slow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe we'll make this for a small child. Yeah, more well, about done, I would say. Okay. So you're going to switch to round at the end of this one? Yep. Okay. Then we'll do that for about four or five inches. Larry said he's hoping to stop by as he goes to Arkansas. Well, oh, nice. you better. We're, we're on, on the way. The, if we're on the way, you better stop by. Because I don't know if you've ever been here. If you haven't, you're missing out. It is. Yeah. It's it's a pretty fun. It's a pretty fun time here. We've got all sorts of crazy stuff. I mean. If you guys spend any time on our website at all, you know that we're always getting in and moving all sorts of weird things. Well, in the store, it's it's even crazier because there's just a lot of stuff that we can't list on the website because we either don't have enough or we have too much and it just we just can't do it all. And we're so up with the shooting videos and and not making new items. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So plus all the rocks, it's just a good time. We've got a lot of we've got one of Denny saddles I think out on retail. Um, two of them. You got it a little miniature. The little baby one and then the, the regular size one. And a cool lampshade, which is probably my favorite thing. It's one of the, I'm going to say it wrong. What? what? A tapadero. Tapadero. I always want to say bandoleros and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking of guns. <laughs> a tapadero um, lamp, which is just really neat. It's all tooled up. Um, just a lot of fun, neat stuff. And then just rocks. We have lots and lots of really, really big rocks. We just got a lot of weird stuff. We have too. A lot of weird stuff. Different stuff. We got snakes and hanging all over the place. Crocodiles on the walls. Yeah. Like I don't. And everything that's out in the retail room isn't all we've got. No. I mean. Yeah. We, you get to some, come see we all our weirdos. Things. We hide things. <laughs> a lot of times we don't know what we have till later. <laughs> oh, it's a good time when we clean. Larry was the one that did the. Uh, the wood slickers for so if you go on our website and you haven't noticed yet are those up the dog on, bone they're on the dog bone the dog bone is is back so go check out that dog bone it's housed up at the top um with all the the category options and you can see all those individual wood slickers that that larry schmidt um made made for us they're gorgeous we have uh, he sent us 12 of them but we only have well now we only have eight left because one sold yesterday mm. 
But Liz, you took one of them. I've got one of them. Stacy over there in the corner took one of them. And then mm -hmm. we filled one on the last YouTube video. Nice. Before I got them listed, I let them have them since they've been having to hear about them for a few weeks. <laughs> Shelton's custom tooling. He's watching Springfield Leather while a FedEx truck's dropping off an order from Springfield Leather. That's a, that's a lot of Springfield Leather. Yeah. So this is this is Brandon. Liz, I don't know if you heard this conversation yet, but he does different type of, of tooling, more um, modern type of tooling, okay. as opposed to Sheridan. And he does them on, on hat bills. Well, fun. So we're going to see if we can team up with him. He has quite a following on TikTok. Team up with him and have him on a uh, a video, a live video with us and, and do a hat. Oh, that sounds fun. Is it Brandon? Mm -hmm. Awesome, Brandon. We look forward to it. Plus, he said he's trying to plan a trip to come up here, too, so maybe he can do one live, live here in the studio. Oh, nice. What? We're going to yeah. have guests? Hopefully. Man, we're getting fancy. We've talked about having um, Ryan, Ryan oh. the Anvil, come oh, over. Oh, man, you guys, you guys know him live. He's a lot. Ryan. He's a character. Love you. Hope you're watching. <laughs> Got old Ryan. Are we getting there? Yeah. Okay. Spencer's just listening and he's just braiding along. He's doing his work. Yeah. We're just doing our talking. So we got it here. Ooh, look That's at that. plenty. Yeah. Yeah. That should be perfect. So yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, so now you're gonna switch to the round braid. Yep. That seems harder than starting to flat braid. Like is it? transitioning yeah. into? Uh, once yeah. you, I'll just say they're about the same. I don't think okay. it looks, it doesn't, if I remember right, it doesn't, our strains didn't look any different to this, just the way that we do the pattern changes. So now what we're... Okay. Well, you explain to us what we're doing, because we don't know what we're two, doing. Over two, under two, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yep. All right, go ahead. Explain it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically, we're going to go into a round braid or uh, eight plat round braid. Blade. Braid. Braid. That's the word I'm looking for. And so. Oh, well, this is different, though, than last week. It is different. Okay. It is different. Because we were only doing six last week. We were week. only doing six. So just like last week, this strand right here is coming over. We want another strand to cross over it. In this direction here, so we're going to take this strand. The highest? The hi well, it, nope. It's kind of the highest. It's hard to tell on a flat braid. It, it's the one coming out. So this one is under, and this one is coming out the Over, top. Yeah. Okay. And so. Okay, you're also going behind. Yep. Now instead of over the top yep. in front. Yeah. I so don't know why I'm trying to watch the screen. We're going to go behind and then under two and over two. So right between those. Okay. And wrap around it. Yep, and around back to the, the back. Middle. So the around the back part is what turns it round. Yep. Going behind first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Now we're gonna this this strand is now the highest. You can really see that. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna bring that around the back. Mm -hmm. Under two, over two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we're taking this one right here. Alternating sides. So you always come around the back, go under two and over two. Yep. So split, split your strands. Mm -hmm. but yeah, that's what you want to do is split them if you have even on both sides. Right. So if you're doing a 10, nope, that's not right. That's not even, that's five. Yep. If you so 12, if you 12, had 12, you would yeah. have three on, six on each side. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, we have a quick question. It's not about brain. The Herman Oak bellies, mm -hmm. do you know about how long they are? I think it's like 45 to like yeah. maybe 60 inches. Yeah, like four to five feet. Yeah, four to five, four to five feet. They vary, 60? 
They 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 vary. You be, yeah. simply depend on what the cow looks like. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they're a little bit short. Sometimes they can be a decent length. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get long cows. Sometimes we get that's short. That's right. Cows. That's exactly right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. They're they're generally fairly uniform. Four to five feet. Do they make a cow stretcher? <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah. It hurts really bad though. <laughs> Cows always ball. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah. We're actually coming out with a different pattern on this one. You see? Oh, from okay. the, Oh, it's because your strands probably weren't. They started in a different place. Yeah. So you can see this is half and That's half. That's okay, though. Like that Alternating. So I think we had like one brown strand on, like dark brown on the light brown side. Oh, okay. we have two on each side. Oh, two on each side. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, that's okay. So just know that if you want the same pattern on both, you need to start with the same amount of colored strands on, on each, each side. Yep. That yeah. You started with. Yep. It's okay. It's not nearly as bad as Denny not sewing his inlay down. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? To, did I bring that in here? I don't think you did. What's that? That one after I finished it. Oh, oh I don't know. What? Well, oh, sorry, I missed what the you were beaded knife sheath. That knife sheath that we made last week. Did oh, I bring no, that you, in? no. I can go get it. Okay. So you can see it because actually, after it's antiqued and everything, it looks pretty good. <laughs> Comparatively speaking. <laughs> uh, Tesla asked if we were going to show some decorative knots hopefully we'll get to some knots today but i yeah. i have a feeling that this series is going to kind of keep on going as we yeah move along hopefully mm -hmm. we're going to get to a, a whip which involves what looks like a million different knots yeah yeah well, not quite it's, it's just yeah how many different braids do you typically have on a whip uh depends how decorative you want it so like an average one uh Two, if you want to just do like a diamond plat handle, diamond handle, you could do a double diamond handle. How, how many, your most fancy one, how many knots, braids, whatever you want to call them? Plats? <laughs> Different type, I don't know. Uh, probably <laughs> six. Ooh. So, no, seven. seven. Seven? That's fun. Yeah. Is that the one you're making for Andrew right now? No, his is simple. <laughs> his is simple. Simple indie style. He's very excited about it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's a well put in. So, and 20 strands on the overlay. Woo! A lot of strands. That's a lot. Yep. It's taken me about six hours to do four feet. So. I hope he's paying you well. Yeah. Yeah, so today we should be getting to do uh, some Turk, Turk's head knots mm -hmm. to finish out this hat band. Yep. So once he gets through these couple inches here of, of the round braid again, um, we'll we'll do a couple knots. Yep. So a quick question, Spencer. This is just for me asking it. Say you would have wrote down how you laid your um, your lace to begin with. If you would have wrote what pattern it was in. You know, like I have four dark browns on this side and four mm -hmm. light browns on this side and you got back to this the flat after you got done with the flat braiding and you want it to be the same mm -hmm. is that what you would do you just keep going till they even out till they till you get what you get four and four on okay. side. yeah it'll eventually if we would have done that then it would have been the same yeah, then it this, been the it's kind of cool it's kind of like a candy cane pattern yeah oh yeah mm -hmm. i just i just named it <laughs> <laughs> is it a spiral no, it's handy cool. thing. What? The pattern. The pattern? I don't know what it's called, but. Oh, hey. So last week, because it was just the six strands, we had a different pattern on the back than we did on the front. Yeah. yeah. And this so this be... one should be the same all the way around, yeah. right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Should be the same size. See, guys, it's the same thing, but it's different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marcus and Papa Bear are both in Europe, and they really need us to open a store over in Germany and and Marcus said he would run it for us. You know every country literally offers that they they all give us that offer. Yeah. They're like we will open your store over here we just need one. 
You know, it won't be the same because it won't have us, guys. <laughs> Mark is going to do a lot of videos over there in German. <laughs> I have been putting these subtitles in German, so he'll have to let me know how the uh, auto translation works. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, did you want to show that knife sheet that he had there? Oh, yeah. Okay, so last week, um, Denny did not antique it before we sewed it together. So he did that afterwards, which is darkened the thread, but it still looks really good. All of that tooling came out super nice. Um, so yeah, there's, there it is. I think we were going to give it away. I don't remember how we were going to give it away, though. And another thing that I neglected to say, when I was stitching it, someone was writing in, I can see the oh, machine the marks. Mm -hmm. And the main reason for that was when I stitched it, the leather was still wet. Right. And you would want to let that yeah, dry first. You would want to let it dry before you yeah. stitched it. But We just don't have that Yeah, we didn't have three days. To let it dry. <laughs> yeah. So after he tooled it, ideally you would throw it aside for a little while and wait till the next day till that leather is dry. We've got offers to open a store in Arkansas, California. Arkansas, you guys. <laughs> You're the closest one. <laughs> you can get, I know, in California, um, now the, the spot in California, I know California is quite large, um, but Standing Bear Trading Post is one of our distributors, and they're out there, so... They can order from us, and they can. They've done custom orders for people um, for stuff that they don't carry all the time. Um, so look up Standing Bear Trading Post, and if if you are out in California near them, you know that that's an option for you guys. Are we getting close? Let's see. Just about. hey, look at that. We're yeah. almost there. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The round braid goes faster than the flat braid, it looks like. Oh, yeah. Uh, we do the explanation of under two, over two, one more time. Yeah. Just before you get to the end of it. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Basically, we're taking the high strand, which would be this strand right here. And then we're bringing it around the back side of it. And we're going, since this is an eight plat, we have four strands on each side. Each side, and we want to split that in half. So we're going to go under two of them and then over two. Bring it over just like that. Perfect. Always keeping that face side facing out. Because mm -hmm. you don't you don't want some weird back side of the lace. Yeah. Yep. You just coming wrap through. It, wrap yep. it around. Wrap it around. Like you're tying your tie. Like you yeah. always want to keep the face side to the outside. Yes. I tried to tie my bows this morning like a tie, but I couldn't manage it, so I just gave up. I'm just tied it in the knot. <laughs> try Liz but no cigar just gave up we had a quick question Denny on your antiquing what did you seal it with before you antique I use I almost exclusively <laughs> use a quick master's shine. quick shine because I can spray it on I don't have to touch the leather it's uh, easy to take outside to get in a well ventilated easy, area and spray that master's easy quick to take shine. It outside, it seals very well. Uh, well, and especially because you got the beaded inlay, like it would be awkward to kind of put a goopy yeah, product on this. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you antique, when you use it as a resist, it's it, you can wipe it on a lot easier. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really make a big difference. But after you've got your resist on and you put your antique on. If you uh, go over it with a with a wipe-on sealer, you will wash a lot of your antique back off with that to, with that wipe-on sealer. Yeah. You know if, whereas if you just uh, spray it on, you don't have to touch it. Right. And everything stays just like it was, and it it's uh, very durable. Shoot, I've I've used it now since I started working here. Before that, I used wipe-on, had poor luck with it. Um, seems familiar. He wants to know, while we're all just watching this braid, uh, do eyelets need grommets or can they be used alone? So, an eyelet is a grommet without the washer. Like, that is an eyelet. And yes, it can be used alone. Um, it is not as sturdy as a grommet. Um, you typically can, like, 
mostly you want to use them on thin leathers um, that you can actually get that eyelet to roll over on and and hold on to. Yeah. You know, like a corset side or, you know, kind of light duty things. A grommet is really more for hardworking. Grommets have usually a larger flange on their head. And then um, the eyelid is also, or the, the, the washer is also pretty and it, pretty wide. And it, plus it gives it more of a finished look on both sides. Exactly, yeah. Eyelids are not always super pretty on the back. So they have different applications. Um, grommets don't go as small as eyelets. So depending on what you're doing, you may not get a grommet that's in the size that you're looking for if you're wanting something that's, that's pretty small. So. I see the potential for uh, another video. Yeah, so <laughs> we'll cover that later. Okay, I think, I think we're ready. Yep. Cool. Mm -hmm. So now we're just going to bind it like we did last week. It's just some bonded <laughs> nylon thread, sewing thread. And this is just, just to hold things together while you uh, tie your turk set knot, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. So you can use any kind of thread probably. Yeah, probably not too bulky though because you yeah. have a lump. Yeah. But not too thin, because last week he... Well, you broke the I thread, broke actually. The, you broke the lace. I broke the lace. <laughs> that was impressive. Yeah. It was... It, I pulled really hard. <laughs> Just showing off a string. <laughs> what is it called? A hangman's loop? Uh, is that what you called it? No? Sure I think they called those a noose. <laughs> <laughs> there was something... Was it, am I crazy? Yeah, a hangman's knot. That's what I called it. Yeah. Oh, okay, maybe that's, that was a Denny thing. Yeah. <laughs> a Dennyism. So people have started calling things. Well, I've been hung a few times. I know about these things. <laughs> <laughs> you have to teach us your trick, Denny, for <laughs> getting out of them. <laughs> Gotta have someone shoot the rope in I was gonna say, you're gonna need a Robin Hood with the arrow. <laughs> Oh man, this part always makes me nervous. Yeah, just yeah, we do have quite a bit of extra here. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're just gonna not too close. You don't want to cut the threads. Nicer if I had a blade, but I don't. Oh, we have a, you got a blade behind us. Nope, that worked perfectly. Okay. We're just gonna see how sharp it is. Let's get safe. Put it on the table. Yeah, let's put it on the table and do it. Don't they give you a pouch in the shop? They do. I just <laughs> didn't bring it in here. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to put a knot foundation on here so the knot doesn't slide off. So we should probably roll it first. That'd be a good idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to roll it out, make it yep. look pretty. That flattens everything out, evens out the tension. Which is very important on a whip. How are those whip videos coming? Oh, the one of him out there cracking? The yeah. Whip? Haven't even touched them yet. I'm waiting until we get to the, the <laughs> cracking, the whip cracking. Mm -hmm. Or we start making the whips. Mm -hmm. You know, since I don't have a core in this, it turned out a little square. So it's like, oh, it doesn't roll. want to roll. So I normally do. It's just kind of smush down the corners. If you were going to put a core in it, what kind of a core would you put in there? Uh, just a piece of leather. Oh, okay. Make sure it's round. You don't want a square piece of leather or set defeat the purpose. <laughs> you can like a, like a very thin piece of wedge tin and roll it up. Okay. Could you use, like, we've got some, like, three mil, like, round cord that we sell. Could you use that or would that yep. be? Okay. Yep. Doesn't want to roll at all. Nope. But then he would saddle soap it if he had the chance. Yep. <laughs> Steve said it looked like a knot to tie a uh, hook on fishing line. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah, we talked about that last week. Apparently, you do a lot of that too. It looked like yeah, yes, time, time flies. Yep. <laughs> I did do a little fishing this weekend. Did you catch anything? For about an hour and a half. Yeah, I caught three really nice white bass. 
Did you eat them or did you let them go? I let them go because I thought, the first one I caught, I thought, well, that's probably the only thing I'm going to kick. So I let it go. <laughs> then I caught another one and I thought, well, shoot, I already let that one go. I bet he caught and the same I one caught three times. One and I thought, man, I wish I'd have kept the <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell if you've caught the same one again? Mark it with a knife or a, with a <laughs> with a knife. Just go ahead. <laughs> Mark it with a pen. Put an air tag on them. <laughs> I don't. I don't do a lot of fishing, guys. You don't say. No. Nope. That's not your fishing shirt. It could be. <laughs> I'm gonna call that good. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. You could go further, but yeah. Go oh, down a little bit. Down here, yep. There we go. I think mm -hmm. it's... Now, yeah, we'll just use the corner of the table. Okay. But, yeah, we're going to basically gonna rub the flat braid against the corner of the table like this. Perfect. And that'll do the same thing as rolling. And you're doing that on the underside. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Denny, it would be super nice if you had a nice kind of curved granite slab yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. something yeah. with a nice polished corner. Mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. I suppose if you wanted to, you could mount, um, we could mount like a glass slicker in the vise, yeah. and then you could that go over it with a glass slicker. Bet that would be great. Yeah. yeah. Just like that, not flatten it out quite a bit. Yeah, that looks nice. Yep. So now we're going to tie a knot foundation. A knot foundation. Yep, and that prevents the knot from sliding off, gives it a little bit to grip onto. Oh, okay. Yep. So we can actually use this piece we bevel with that to use. I remember something else we talked about doing a video on, Denny, since we got on fishing. And remember fishing and pool cues that we talked about? <laughs> Yeah, uh, a pool, pool cube case. Yeah. I've never made one. I guess now's the time to start, huh? <laughs> no time like the present. I think yeah. Denny and I are actually going to do a tooling video this week. Yeah, we're going to do uh, some uh, basic geometric stamps in a field and uh, some border stamps around that and then uh, show people how to do a meander border, which is some people call it a running W or whatever but uh, yep because we we've got a lot of different tools that you can mess with doing that kind of stuff okay all yeah. right not foundation yeah basically just gonna take a piece this is a little less than a quarter inch but and we're gonna wrap it around one time just to get the size just about like that Cut that little bit off. Go a little more than that. You just want them to butt up against each other? Butt up against each other. Don't overlap because then you have a lump. Okay. Just about like that. So just one, one little thing of leather. leather. Yep. Okay. Are we going to glue that down? We're going to uh, wrap, it? wrap it down. Is could you glue it, or would that not be enough? Oh, uh, you could glue it. Yes, you could glue it and wrap it. That's even better. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, Marcus, no, you cannot do that. Just gonna <laughs> don't do that. They will not mix. Can you ask his question so that everybody watching would know what it was? If say that on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marcus asked if we could mix the Phoebe's water-based dyes with the alcohol ones. Um, no, you have to same, same, same. Family. Yeah, same family. It's actually probably easier with a little glue. You know, but yeah. we did have a little bottle of Rainier Super Glue, but you know we. Then he spilt it all over his hand. We arranged that actually. Might. Is this what you were talking about? No, we had like a little super glue, little. Oh yeah. The little super glue, super glue. Yeah, I finally 
wore the super glue off my hand the other day. <laughs> So Seems Familiar is asking if the lace that he's working with is thinner than the lace in the braid. Uh, it's about the same. It might be a little wider. Yes, wider, but it's not thicker. It's not thicker. No. It's the same yeah. same lace. You just have it to bevel it. Yep. Turn it off. Yep. Yeah. I have enough tag end here. <laughs> I'm using a 20, line 20 snaps on two to three ounce, and the post either bends when you, or the mushroom bends. The, you're, uh, even if you're using a, a, a short to post on your, your line 20 snap, uh, you still need to grind a little bit off of it for that thin of leather. Yeah, that, that post is going to just be too long yeah. to work happily. Yeah, the post should not stick through the leather actually to it's, me if it's almost flush with the with the two pieces of leather that's perfect because when you uh, actually set those snaps it compresses the leather and you gain a little well it depends on the post sometimes that the stud sticks up a little bit right. on the middle so right. you want it you want it to come just through the side that you're working with um just a little bit yeah if it's through more than like a 16th or so it's probably going to be too long and your post is going to bend. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so we have secured our base. Yep. Foundation. Foundation. All right, base. so you've got just a big lump there at the yep. end. <laughs> yep. That's what you've done. Pulling off, so. All yep. right. Now we got a tie or knot. So for that, I have... That's when... That's when this... this oh, we used this yeah. Yeah. the ninja spike. That's yes. terribly frightening contraption. Yep. It looks like a medieval. Mm -hmm. So we've got, yeah, this. Got war axe or something. Oh, hey, I, <laughs> it's fine. They're yeah. supposed to come out. They're supposed to come out. Yes. I don't know where I am. There we are. Yep. And, you know what? <laughs> I'm just gonna just gonna not do that anymore. Yeah. And I have some other strands that I sized down. Okay. I don't know what size here. So are these maybe the same width as the other ones? Uh, I believe they're what? An eighth. Eighth of an inch. They're an eighth. Eighth inch. But I sized them so it's consistent. It's a perfect eighth of an inch. So he ran it through his other medieval contraption yep. and made sure it was perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then we got a. This is y'all's. From a lock needle. Large. Yep. Not the jumbo, just not the, large. the jumbo. So we're gonna cut a angle into this, so it fits a little nicer. And these needles. It are threaded on the inside so you can just mm -hmm. just kind of screw it in there so this is the large permalock needle mm -hmm. doesn't the small one have like a flat end that the uh, jumbo does yeah oh the jumbo does mm -hmm. okay is there a small one i don't think so okay so i don't that one is a, that one he's using as the small one because <laughs> it's not the jumbo yeah you could probably also use uh, just a, a two-prong lacing needle yep to do that couldn't mm -hmm. you okay. Yep. Now, that's where this comes in. And we're going to be tying a five-part, four-byte, two-pass Turk's head knot. What? Okay. One, one five, more time? Five-part. Yep, five-part. Two-byte? Four-byte. Four-byte. Two-pass. Two-pass. Yes. And if you I can't, can't, even if that you can't say the name of this, you're not allowed to tie it. Anyway. <laughs> five-part, yep. four-byte, mm -hmm. two-pass. Yep. Okay, Turk's head knot. Yep. So what, one, more, one more time, will you go over the tools, all the tools that we're using? Yeah, basically this is a just a... Sketchy? Sketchy Mini jig. Mace. Yeah, with <laughs> a, what, four pins, so you want... And how have you drilled those? Just drill, just right through the middle. But like spacing-wise? It doesn't matter. Okay. Just enough to give you enough room. Okay. But yeah, this is the basic knot, and then from this you can expand it to like a five part six bite. Oh, well, let's not go in there. And other pineapple knots. So, this is the base to a pineapple knot. Does it matter how big the dowel is? Uh, the bigger, the easier it is to tie. Okay. But this will take, we'll actually take the knot off of this and slide it onto our uh, knot foundation and tighten it. And tighten it down, okay. Yep, and, there, and what is that dowel, like a half inch? Uh, this is three eighths. Three eighths, three, three eighths. eighths dowel. Yep. Oh, look at that, there we go. There we go. All right, so there's 
two rules. Uh, when I first started tying these, I just followed a video on how to tie them. And it's hard to remember each step. Okay. Because there's so many steps. So there's basically two rules you want to follow. And the first rule is whenever you start, here we're going to start here. So first we're going to start on the bottom of this, just one of them, doesn't matter. We're going to start here, bring it up at a 45 bring it over this this peg right here and then around the back under that one right there, there. again you're wrapping right yep we're just you wrapping it around the lace yep and then uh the first rule is you want to go your first two wraps you want to go over over so you see my tail end right here i'm going to go over that okay and i'm going to bring it around the back again and this is where the second over comes in this strand right here we're going to go over that and this is going to create our second bite what, so, is, what is a bite uh how many sections you have on top so this would be a one two three four bite okay and then basically now the second rule is you're going to do whatever okay see this strand coming down we're going to do the opposite of what the strand to the right of it does. Okay. So the strand to the right of it goes over this, our tag end here. So we're going to take it and go under it because that's the opposite of what that strand does. All right, so we went under this strand right here. We're going to bring it around the bottom here, go under this peg, bring it around. You see the strand to the right of this, this strand mm -hmm. now goes over this strand. We need so to we're go going over. to do the opposite of what that strand is. Yes. Under that one. Bring it around. We're going to go over this, this strand right here. Over that. Make sure it's facing the right way. Now descending, we're going to do the same thing, opposite of the strand on the right. So this strand goes under. We're going to go over this strand. Go around. Now it goes strand on the right goes over. Now we're going to go under this strand right here. So how do you know what peg to go? Um, is basically uh, each pass you take another peg. So the next one in line. So at first we took this one here, we went around, and then the next one went this one. And the third one we'll take around, we took around this one. And the fourth one will go this one. So basically, so now we have all four bites. Yes. Okay. And we're just gonna follow that round like that. Did I mess this up? Might have. You're confusing us. Yes, I'm confusing myself also. <laughs> Let me look at it here. I think you're upside down. See guys, this is super easy. Yeah, really easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me go back. Mm. No. Mm. Goes like that. Um. <laughs> yes. Get back up to remember where you were at? Uh, yeah. I think so. Maybe. You want to start over again? Possibly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. All right. Easy part. You just pull it apart. Look at that. Then yep. you just pull it right off. Let's start again. I confused myself there. How 
much lace do you have? Maybe like two feet? Uh, maybe not quite. Probably. Just okay. in case. It won't take this much, but... <laughs> just in case. A little extra. Yeah, always err on the side of a little too much. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we're starting again. Starting so over. Okay. Yep. So we've pinched below. Yep, and we're going to go up over that peg. Like that. That peg didn't fall out. Thank you. Like that. We're going to go over like that. Yeah, that's what I did wrong. Oh, because you came down on the first one. You came all the way down. I came down. Yeah, all the way down and crossed. I came down like this. So we need to go above that peg. Yep. Okay. I believe that's right. Yep. That's right. None of these pegs are not so no, like they're your not. friends. Should have made the holes a little smaller. So they're <laughs> snug, but yeah. We're gonna go over this peg, not under it. That's what I did wrong last time. And then under the next peg. Yeah. So you come oh oh, uh, oh come on. Under that peg. And over, and then we've got the second bite. Yep, second bite. And then we're going to go opposite of this strand. So, over that, over that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Turks are confusing. Very confusing. And then this strand right here goes over this one. So we're going to go under this one. Make sure it's always laying flat. Mm -hmm. And that's our third bite. Yep. Okay. Does that one need to go under? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're going to go back. All right. <laughs> yep. I can actually just take this tag in here. And oh, and just weave it. Look at that. Fix it. If it wants to. Now we're good. Take it over. Like that. Over that one. Under this one. Like this? Yeah. yeah. I know that your pegs like to fall out when you do that. Yes. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to go under this strand or around that there. And under this one right here. Over that peg. Yep. Sorry. I keep going out of frame here. <laughs> <laughs> Under that right there. Over that one. Under this. Over that one. Under this one. All right. Now we're done. Okay. Yep. So that's it. That was very confusing. 
So how do you know that you're done? Uh, I came back to the tag end here. So. Okay. So you made it back to like the same point. Yep, where I started. Mm -hmm. So you got, what is it, like three strands coming through each one? Like three looping around? Yes, or four technically. Because you got three, four coming down and then one, two, three, four. Okay, I see that one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you could count it different ways. No, I got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's... That's a five part four by single pass. So we could do more passes. Yep. And you could make it like bigger. Bigger. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, this one, did you do two passes on this one? Yeah. Okay. Except uh, for the binding, I did one pass. Oh, that's really... It's and black. It's but black. we're not going to get that one. Up. Okay. Well, all right. So you could take it off and put it on to your project and then... Do the second pass, but I'll just do the second pass on here. Uh, oh. Uh, do you want to do? I'll do the second pass on here. Okay. So it shows up a little better. It's basically just going to follow our strand that we had. If I have enough th lace to do that. You say, could you do the second pass with your other color? Um. Or could, no. I have not done that with leather, a second color. Uh-huh. But I have done that with paracord because all you do is melt the ends and squish them together. Mm. So I'm not sure exactly how to do that with leather. Gotcha. I'd gotcha. probably splice them together. Probably. Mm -hmm. Some glue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, contact cement. Okay. So we're just following what you just did. Exactly. I don't think you're going to have enough. I don't think so either. <laughs> so. Could we do it with a single pass? Or yeah. I mean, once we tighten it up, I'll have plenty. Oh, I, lace. I understand your conundrum yeah. now. Yeah. So I think I am just going to put it on there. Okay. So basically, we're just going to take out all our pins. And all those loops should stay because they're housed in and out of each. Yep. Okay. So we can just kind of slide it off. You can take that little loop off. Like so. We're going to take our this. Just kind of slide it in there, not on the foundation yet. We're going to tighten it up a little bit before that. So hold down our tag end again and just start working it. So you just work your way around. Exactly. Just work your way around, pulling everything tight. And just follow that lace all the way around. Mm -hmm. It's like the worst shoelace <laughs> conundrum <laughs> ever. Yeah. <laughs> and you can do this on a smaller dowel rod. Or you cannot do it on a dowel rod at all. You don't need the pegs. It just makes it a little easier to lay out because strands can get crossed. Sure. So, I'm going to follow that lead strand. It just doesn't have to be tight. Just pick Because well, you don't want it super tight yet because you still got to cinch it down over. Yep. You just want to pick up a lot of that slack. Sure. I almost feel like this is a don't try this at home moment, but please do and see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. This this is not a, probably a, the simplest knot you could tie, but it, it's probably a lot easier to do without uh, however many people are watching and mm -hmm. without <laughs> having, to, having to keep it in view all in the view, time. I mean, yeah. yeah. It is, you want to work up close to your body with mm -hmm. things like this, and we have to, we make him hold it like a foot out away. So I can move the table. That help us if I move the table? No, I think we got it. It's yeah. <laughs> All right. Yep. And then you you were, were doing another pass too, right? So you don't yep. want to. You would need to leave room yeah. for that. But, but, well, we're actually going to tighten it down onto this and snug it down onto our foundation. And then when we do our second pass, it'll really tighten it up. Tighten it down because it okay. puts more in there. Okay. For it to tighten down. So we got rid of all the slack, and you're scooching it down. Yep. Actually, we are going to flip this around like so because we want our tag end on the inside. We don't want it on that tip. Okay. Oh, yeah, because on these it looks like you, you cinched it down so that yeah. um, it's a closed knot at the very end. Yep. The bite's mm. at the end, yep. The bite is at the end. Yep. Because we were doing all the little loops. 
which make a bite. Mm -hmm. Why is it called a bite? I don't know. Interesting. Is it because it's the mouth? It's the opening? I'm just making stuff up, guys. <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> We're doing on uh, on the candy cane end of the round braid, candy, candy cane style of round braid, <laughs> the candy cane pattern. Tom says one of the hardest things to do is weave leather under the watchful eyes of all of us <laughs> and Denny and Liz. <laughs> we don't judge. We just point out your faults. <laughs> <laughs> that's we not good. Discovery. We make discoveries. That's, that's right. what we do. Yeah, that was the best. I don't know who came up with that, but I love it. We don't make mistakes. We just make discoveries. <laughs> yeah, it looks really cool, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's looking more like a Turk's head knot all the time. I'm pretty sure I would just tie my fingers in knots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you don't have patience, this is not yeah. the project for you. You need a lot of patience. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs to do those wooden puzzles when you can knot up leather? Yeah. And I would say after you've done this a hundred times, it probably gets more simple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when we're not all watching you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and trying to stay in the and, and trying to stay in frame. <laughs> I can zoom the camera out a little bit. I don't know if we'll be able to see what's going on then. Yeah. That might be better. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you're getting it pretty snug on there. Yeah. Okay. Just enough to hold it down. Not like that. Looking good, dude. Yeah. So now we're just going to follow our lead strand all the way around. It seems like it would be more difficult, but oh, you're not in frame. I'm not in frame again. Yeah. Yep. So just follow it under and over and under and over? Yep. Okay. You're just weaving again. Mm hmm. Doing exactly what my first strand did. Just following the leader. Mm -hmm. Marcus said a couple years back he got a book on how to braid paracord. He can never get the Turks head knot to work. Now he remembers why. <laughs> <laughs> this is intense, though. I keep looking at that screen and it's making me go fuzzy. <laughs> well, he's standing right in front of you. I know. I don't know why. Because I'm making sure he's in frame so I yep. can tell him when he's not. <laughs> Guys, I ran out of coffee. <laughs> it's a bad day. <laughs> You're starting to amaze me because it's looking like a turk's head. Uh -huh. Yeah, and this is the basic turk's head. Like, well, we're happy with this. <laughs> basic is plenty good. <laughs> Doesn't look very basic to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. Yep, if you want to tie a bigger one after your first pass, you expand it. Different ones. We'll let you guys at home play with the more complicated ones. Mm -hmm. What did you say? Did you say what we were doing on Friday? Yeah, we did. You can go back about 15, 20 minutes ago and listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't hear doing some filling, right? Yeah, we're going to do some geometric filling up fields and some borders. Yes, some different borders. Some different yes. borders. We're going to tap, tap, tap it. Yeah. On Friday. We got some new tools moving through the oh yeah new item process yeah when how how close are those because 
I don't know. I think Darcy's writing descriptions, maybe. I haven't seen them on the photography board yet. How much descriptions do those need? P200. <laughs> Done. <laughs> okay. What do we need? We're just about done. Just about done. I see you've got two over your thing there. Yeah. It's getting tight, guys. Mm -hmm. And if you're a smaller needle, it'll be easier. Do believe I messed it up. Yeah. <laughs> we won't talk about that. Yeah, we won't talk about that. <laughs> it's close enough. It's, yeah. If I had time, I would take it all apart and redo it. See, yeah, not if nothing would have been said, no, no one, one would have noticed. Them. All right. Yep. And then do you mash this flat afterwards? Yep, we will. I could see how this is a lot easier with a beveled strand than it would be with um, just a regular flat old piece of lace. Mm -hmm. and, of yeah. It'll be easier to practice on something bigger. Sure. Yes. All right. We're going to call that done. Okay. But I messed it up, so it'll be fine. You there, you did. It looks good, though. Longer. It's on there. So you. <laughs> it's on there. The end has pinched up to where it's pretty well closed on that side. Yeah. Okay. So how do you end it? Uh, We'll just cut that off right there Just and kind of tuck the end in. Okay. And that'll be it. So you don't like pull it yeah, through just, somewhere. Just clip both ends off short, right? Yep. I mean, you could put a little glue on there just in case. But it's it's but, pretty tight. Yeah, it's pretty tight. And especially, I mean, you're not really doing anything. I guess you can kind of pull it to. Yeah, know. and I don't think you'll be taking it on and off your hat. Exactly. So we're just gonna make sure you don't cut your strands underneath it. Yeah, you're making me nervous. Yep. He had some good scissors. Yeah. There we go. There we go. So really, that first time around is the important one because then you just follow it, mm -hmm. follow yeah. the same path over and over. Yeah, but yeah, I didn't follow the same path. <laughs> You're like, do you have one with three and one with one? No, I have one with one. Okay. Yep. Well, it's fine. That looks great. Y'all can't really see it. But. It looks great. No one would ever see that. You know, if we had done two different colors, you would definitely be able to yes. see it. But since it's just yes. the same color, it just blends together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So then, will you basically just do the same thing for the, the knot that holds them together? Yeah. Exact same thing. Okay. Exact same thing. Okay. So this right one, here. yeah, you've got a Turk's head knot on both ends, which we won't suffer you guys through yeah. two more of these mm -hmm. <laughs> you put another one on the other end and then you do one in the middle yeah. to hold the two pieces together mm -hmm. and that's it yep hey do you want to wiggle this concho in there real fast yeah we can do that okay on the front like it's going to be like this okay what do you think i like it on the side on the side yeah, like on the opposite mm -hmm. side on the opposite yeah. side yeah make everything feel even yeah we'll put the bag right there Okay. So we're just gonna. Did you just take one of those pins? Yes, I did. Okay. Preferably you use an awl. <laughs> I don't have. Like I was gonna say, this, you could use like the little tips of. You could, yes. Your needle there. It might work a little better, get a little wider hole. Denny would call that wallering. Wallering. Yeah. <laughs> Waller that out. Yep. <laughs> and you just pop. Nope, not enough. Not enough. You need a little bit more, a little bigger waller. Maybe. Then you can just screw it down. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> wall from the other way. Yep. <laughs> Ooh. Maybe, if it wants to stay wide enough. There we go. It's a finger fight, guys. Mm -hmm. 
What is Kevin always? Is it a finger fight when you're lathing? <laughs> Kevin's always finger fighting something or other. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yep. And you could tighten that down a little more. Yeah. Or like, or if it's if you know it's too flat and, and you need a little bit, you can put a little washer on the back of it just to yeah. hold it nice in place. Mm -hmm. But there's there's a concho on a hatband. Yep. So when you do that Turk's head for the middle for like the slide part, mm -hmm. you would just leave it big and slide it on there and then slide yep. the other one through and then start and to then, tighten it down. And then tighten it down, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there you don't, it is. You don't get the full bite because you don't close it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so funny. Okay. okay. Chinese finger knob. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Awesome. Okay, well, guys, we will finish this hat band out. Later, we'll give him a break from his Turk's head knot anxieties yes. over here. Um, next week, we will be back with something else. We haven't decided quite what yet, but we'll figure something else out. Denny and I will be back on Friday with some tooling, and uh, we'll see you then. Thanks for joining us. See you. Bye.